Ahmed Ben Chemsi is the communications director at Human Rights Watch in the Middle East and North Africa. He joins us live from New York. Ahmed, small amounts of aid is getting through, but given it's so much less than what usually arrives in Gaza, how is it being divided and distributed? Well, I don't know. That's a very good question. But I mean, in any case, it shouldn't be as meager. Uh, as of today, the Israeli army allowed only 34 truckloads of supply via the uh, Rafah crossing. It is far less than the 100 truckloads daily that aid agencies said are the minimum requirement. And that was even before they were bombarded relentlessly uh, every day. Also, the Israeli authorities have refused to allow fuel because they say that it could be diverted with, by Hamas, but that consists also in uh, in punishing the population. I mean, this is this is pretty incomprehensible because even in previous wars fought in Gaza since 2008, uh, the Israeli authorities maintained water and electricity supplies. And also they periodically opened the crossing with Gaza to allow at least minimum humanitarian, humanitarian aid. Uh, and by the way, by 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 keeping like the, 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 the door shut to humanitarian aid, they are violating the laws of war because this is collective punishment and this is a low crime, the, uh, 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 a war crime. So they need to immediately allow humanitarian aid, not only via Rafah, by the way, but also by their uh, by their own crossings, not via trucks. Uh, and the electricity and the water, it shouldn't enter via trucks. They must simply switch back the flick on water and electricity supply. And that would meet at least some of Gaza's enormous humanitarian needs. And Ahmed, what are your contacts and colleagues on the ground saying about how the situation has changed in the last couple of days as we enter the second week since the siege began? The humanitarian situation is absolutely catastrophic. I mean, humanitarian aid workers and doctors are reporting severe food and water shortages, sewage running in the streets, you know, like the, that can bring a lot of, of waterborne or sewage borne rather diseases, uh, severe shortages of medicine, even as hospitals, uh, even as they struggle to treat the thousands of injured, they are at full capacity and the injured keep coming in. Uh, now, the supplies, the water supplies are down to three liters of water per person. Uh, uh, last time we checked and it could be less now. Understanding that the World Health Organization says that uh, the minimum is 50 liters uh, per person. There is no electricity, which leaves residents dependent on backup generators, but those backup generators cannot be operated without fuel and uh, or diesel, and diesel also coming from Israel, and also it has been stuck from coming in. I mean, wherever, from whatever angle you take it, the humanitarian situation is absolutely catastrophic. I mean, and we're not talking about the thousands of deaths and, uh, and the thousands and thousands of, of uh, injured and wounded who keep coming to hospitals that are already saturated. Ahmed, Human Rights Watch collects and records evidence of rights abuses, but given how complex and deeply rooted the political and religious dynamics are in the region, in Gaza, how do you make sure that you yourselves stay impartial when you're reporting? Well, simply by sticking to facts. I mean, we're not taking any side and we're not doing any ideology. We just examine facts. Did civilians have access to water, yes or not? So we speak with water authorities. We speak with with the uh, uh, people who tell us that they, who testify that they don't have access to water and to electricity. We speak to doctors who describe the situation in, in hospitals. Uh, when we're not sure, like for example, and the, 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 the blast that, that, that targeted the uh, Baptist hospital uh, one week ago, we say that we're not sure. And we say that, okay, people were dead, but we are still investigating. And we will investigate and we will examine uh, forensic evidence, and at some point we will make a determination. We haven't made it so far. But for the rest, we just, you know, examine the evidence on the ground. For example, we also established that the Israeli army has used phosphorus, uh, white phosphorus uh, ammunition, which are, by the way, forbidden by international uh, uh, conventions. And we have uh, spoke with, with people who described the, the patterns of smoke, the smell. We have analyzed videos. We do our, our research work uh, thoroughly, just as, as usual. Ahmed Benchemzi in New York, thank you very much for joining us.